A reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this in gentleness and respect. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Rebecca Green for asking me to speak to you today. I feel honored to be here to share my story with all of you. Even though I'm excited, I have to admit, when Rebecca first asked me, I was stunned and nervous, and I told her, give me a few days to think about it. Within the days that followed, I kept asking myself, what qualifies me to be considered to do this? And more importantly, what on earth am I going to talk about? When I approached Rebecca about my reservation, she looked at me and said, well, Grant, you're Mennonite, and that's pretty unique, and you really enjoy inner faith. It was almost as if this light bulb went off in my head. I thought, yeah. I am Mennonite, and I really do enjoy interfaith. Okay, Becca, let's do this. <laughs> there are over two million Mennonites across the globe, and yet there seem to be about that many stereotypes and misconceptions about us as well. In rural Marion, South Dakota, where I grew up and call home, roughly the entire town of 1,300 attends one of the four Mennonite churches. Because of this, Mennonites and the Mennonite tradition surrounded me wherever I went. And everyone seemed to have the common understanding of the virtues, values, and moral integrity held within our community. No one appeared to question why or how things were done, and for 18 years, this is how I lived and all I believed. I had little exposure to outside religions other than the one I was so deeply subscribed. It wasn't until I made the choice and moved here to Luther College that others questioned my faith and faith background, something I had never done myself. I can remember driving through Harmony, Minnesota the day before moving my first year and seeing the horses and buggies lining the sides of Highway 52. Having grown up with an understanding of the Amish community, I didn't think much of it. However, within the first couple weeks into the fall semester, I remember people joking and laughing at me when I told them of my Mennonite heritage. Many comments included, so where's your horse and buggy? Or, so do you have a cell phone? Or, more common than not, What's it like growing up without electricity? Humorous, I know. I laughed it off and explained my normal childhood, but I was taken aback by the sincerity in their questioning. As the semester and year progressed, questions about my faith began to become more frequent and more in-depth until one day one of my closest friends simply asked me, what is a Mennonite? And honestly, I did not have an answer for them. My faith had officially been challenged. Fast forward to my sophomore year where I took public address with Professor Derek Sweet. One of our topics was an informative speech where we, were merely, where we merely had to inform the class about a particular topic of our choice. Seeing this as my opportunity to better prepare myself for the question of, what is a Mennonite? I took advantage of the occasion to gather as much information on my faith, and then felt prepared to talk about it with others. I'm sure by this point, a lot of you sitting in the audience today or listening online are probably thinking, you know, I, I don't even know what a Mennonite is. Or maybe you have some other preconceptions about us. I'm going to briefly share a few of those points from that speech that I gave so you can gain a better, better understanding of where I come from. First, who we are. In the simplest terms, Mennonites are Christians. We believe in the Holy Trinity and the Lordship and saving grace of Jesus Christ. We yearn to grow more like Christ. Mennonites are neither Catholic nor Protestant, but rather Anabaptists, meaning rebaptizers. Although we share ties with those streams of Christianity, this rebaptizing is a crucial component in our theology. Being an Anabaptist means that with the support of my family and local congregation, it was my choice to follow Jesus Christ, and I was voluntarily baptized at the age of 15. Second, who we are not. Mennonites are not a closed group. Mennonites value a sense of family and community that comes with a shared vision of following Jesus Christ, accountability to one another, and the ability to agree and disagree in love. And finally, the most prominent of misconceptions that I've received in the most recent years, Mennonites are not Amish. Mennonites and Amish come from the same Anabaptist tradition that began in the 16th century, but there are differences in how we live out our Christian values. The distinctiveness of the Amish is our separation from the society around them. They generally shun modern technology, keep out of political and secular spheres, and dress simply. Once I had this foundation that I now shared with you today, I, on the background of where I came from, I felt better prepared to not only answer questions about my own faith, but then question others on theirs. However, I was doing a lot of this within the confines of Luther College and deliberating with other Christians. 
It was not until my junior year where I gained a strong awareness of worldwide, worldwide religion. Last year, I spent the entire academic year in Nottingham, England. The city of Nottingham is known for its diverse population, both ethnically and religiously. I suddenly found myself outside the confines of Midwest Christianity and thrown into a community where we were one of the few Americans, Caucasians, and Christians in the area. Talk about a culture shock. It was new, it was exciting, and it quickly became my new norm. About eight months into my study abroad, I started to dread the thought of coming back to America. I recognized this anxiety to return home was in part because I'd be missing out on the various exposures and interactions with different religions and different religious people, such as Anglo-Saxons, Muslims, and Buddhists. I'd miss discussing with European natives the beautiful spiritual or non-spiritual practices of that individual. This feeling, I now realized, was a turning point in my life where I recognized the importance of upholding an intentional interfaith dialogue. Coming back to America in May, I made it my mission to continue having these dialogues with others. However, I realized when coming back how difficult these conversations are to have at times. Whether it's because these conversations make people uncomfortable, because individuals are so set in their convictions, or because others simply don't understand religion at all, I found myself more discouraged with religion and the world than I was excited to talk about it. It was through these first three months and back in a time of hopelessness that I came across this verse that I read today, which for me sums up how to engage in interfaith conversations. 1 Peter 3.15 states, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this in gentleness and respect. I see this verse in three parts. The first part, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Whether Christ is Lord for you, you worship another divinity, or maybe you don't have one at all. Admiring something beyond or within yourself is a crucial component of any spiritual practice. Second, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. This is the part I had to learn and struggle with the most. Coming into Luther, I was terrified to talk about my Mennonite heritage. It wasn't until I did considerable research that I felt ready to answer these questions about Mennonites, the ones I had once dreaded. Finally, do this with gentleness and respect. I believe this last part of the verse is the most pertinent when beginning interfaith conversations. One must recognize the differences in another's convictions and be open to understanding their faith with a kind and open heart. So through believing in your convictions, having a strong sense of your religious heritage, and being able to then communicate your beliefs and backgrounds with others, we can all learn from one another and engage in interfaith dialogue. Here today, right now, you and I are experiencing interfaith at work. Although it can be in front of an audience through some sort of public storytelling like I'm doing today, it can also be through your daily conversations with others. It is through these conversations that we can experience the transformative power of interfaith at play and how we can dismantle any preconceptions of others and learn about one another. But above all, I encourage you to do this with gentleness and respect. Amen.